11.3b, naming organic compounds. For this lesson, you'll need table P, which gives uh, prefixes for organic compounds, table Q, which gives hydrocarbons, alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, and table R, which gives suffixes for functional groups. Let's move on to the lesson. Let's talk about how to name ethers, esters, amines, and amides. All right? And the way you do this is you can actually just use examples from table R along with tables P and Q. All right, because tables, uh, table R will give you examples of how to name esters, ethers, amides, and amines. As you can see in this example here, the side chain is, the side chain is named first, and then the ester group is named last. All right, so let's see how to name that specifically. You have to name the side chain first, whether it's methyl, ethyl, or propyl. All right, so the side chain always goes first in the name, which is whatever's to the side of uh, the ester group. Then the ester group is named last. How you do that is you name the prefix based on the number of carbons, plus you add the OH ending, right? So uh, table P is where you get the prefixes, and table R gives you the ending anoate or O8, all right? So let's try an example here. The uh, side chain here is CH3 because this is the ester group, and the side chain to the side here next to the COO is CH3, so that's methyl for the side chain. The ester group would be... Um, First of all, prop, because you have three C's, so it's prop, and then you, you would add a no eight at the end, all right, for the main group. So the whole name for this whole thing would be methyl propanoate, because you have the CH3 as the side chain, and the ester group is three carbons, which is prop, and then the ester group, which is a no eight, okay? So there you go, methyl propanoate. Let's try another example here. The uh, ester group is here, COO. And the uh, side chain here to the right is uh, CH3, so we call that methyl. So the first part of the name would be methyl. All right, the uh, ester group would be last in the name, so we would use the prefix based on the number of carbons first. If we count the number of carbons, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So the prefix would be hex based on table P. All right, and the ending would be a no eight based on table R since you had the ester group C double bond to OO. All right, so therefore, your full name for this whole thing would be methyl, since you have the side chain here, and then hexanoate, since you have six carbons and you have the ester group right here. So the whole name for this is methyl hexanoate. Methyl meaning the side chain and hexanoate because you have uh, six C's and a COO group, mentioning that's an ester with the ending anoate, okay? Next, we have ethers. How do you name ethers is you start off with the prefix di or tri if you have two or three of the same side chain. If you don't have two or three of the same side chain, then you just ignore the step. But in any case, you use the prefix di or tri if you have two or three of the same side chain. In step two, you have to name the side chains left to right. And then in step three, you have to name the group, which is the ending of ether, no matter what um, it is. As long as you have an ether, the ending will always be ether. All right, so the prefix are try for two or three of the same side chain. Then you name the side chains left to right. Then you put the group ending of ether last. All right, so let's try that with an example here. Here we have CH3 on one side, and we have CH2, CH3 on the other side. All right, so um, we don't have two or three of the same side chains, so we ignore step one. In step two, we have to name the side chains left to right. So if we name what's on the left, we name it methyl, because CH3 is methyl. Then we name what's on the right, which is CH2, CH3, or ethyl. All right, so naming from left to right, we get methyl first, and then ethyl second. Finally, in step three, we have to name the group ending ether, since there's an O in the middle. All right, so the full name for this is methyl for the first uh, side chain, ethyl for the second side chain, and ether for the fact that you have an O in the middle. All right, so there you go. Let's try another example here. Um, we have CH3, CH2 here, and CH3 on this side. Since we don't have two or three of the same side chain, we ignore step one. All right. However, now we have to name the side chains um, from left to right. The first side chain is CH3, CH2, which is ethyl or ethyl. And then we have to name the um, side chain on the right next, which is methyl, since it's CH3. Okay, so you name from left to right, you get ethyl on the left since it's CH3, CH2, and methyl on the right since it's CH3. All right, so so far you have ethyl, methyl. Then the ending must be ether because you have an O in the middle in between everything. So the full name, putting all three of these together, is ethyl, methyl, ether, because we name the side chains left to right first, which is ethyl on the left, methyl on the right, and ether last because you have an O in the middle. All right, next we have amides. Amides are very simple. Um, all you have to do is use uh, a prefix based on the number of carbons from table P. Then you have to put the group ending of 
anamide. All right, so let's see how this works out here. Here we have three carbons, one, two, three, if we count, so we know that the prefix is prop for three carbons based in table P. Based in table R, since we have C double bond to ON and NH2, we know that the ending is anamide. All right, so we put together the fact that we have three carbons for prop and C double bond to ONH2, we get prop anamide. The prop is because we have three carbons and the anamide is because of this functional group here, C double bond to ONH2. All right, let's try another example here. Here we have four carbons on the main chain, so we name it um, but, and then the uh, group ending is anamide because you have C double bond to ONH2. So putting this together, you get butanamide. The reason why it's butanamide is because you have four carbons and you have this functional group C double bond to ONH2, so you call it anamide. So together, it's butanamide. All right, for amines, you name it in the following way. You have to um, use the lowest number of the amine, then you have to put the prefix based on the number of carbons from table P. Then you have to put the group ending of an amine to indicate that's an amine. All right, so let's try that with an example here. The lowest number of the amine functional group NH2 is, uh, if we name it backwards, 4, 3, 2, 1, uh, and 1, 2, 3, 4, the lowest number of NH2 would be 1 since 1's less than 4. All right, so the, num the lowest number here for the NH2 functional group would be 1. So we know the number is 1. The prefix would be based on the number of carbons. Since we have 1, 2, 3 carbons here, we know that the uh, prefix is prop based on table P for 3 carbons. All right, and the group ending is anamine since you have an NH2 at the end, so you know that the ending is anamine. So putting this together, we get one propanamine. All right, let's try another example with this uh, example here. The lowest number of NH2 we can figure out by numbering uh, forwards and backwards. So if we do that forwards and backwards, we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The lowest number to which the NH2 is attached is at the first carbon since 1 is less than 5. So the lowest number of NH2 being attached is 1. All right? So the, the number we know is 1. The prefix um, <clears throat> for this would be... Uh, Pent. The reason why is because we have one, two, three, four, five carbons, and five carbons, as we know, has the prefix uh, pent. And then the group ending is anamine, since we have an NH2, so we know the ending is anamine. So putting all three of these pieces of information together, we get one pentanamine. One, because the functional group NH2 is attached to the first carbon, if we number it as low as possible. The prefix is pent, because we have five carbons, and anamine, because we have the NH2 at the end. All right, so together, it's one pentanamine. All right, uh, let's continue with naming of ethers with some more examples. Let's remember the procedure for naming ethers is you use uh, di or tri for the prefix, followed by the side chain's name from left to right, then you name the ending of the ending of ether last. So let's look at this example here. We have CH3CH2 on this side, but we also have CH3CH2 on this side. Since we have two of the same side chains, we use the prefix di first. All right? Then we had to name the prefix, uh, sorry, we had to name the, uh, the side chains left to right. We have CH3CH2 or ethyl on this side, and we also have CH3CH2 on this side. Since we have two of the same side chain, we can just name it diethyl instead of diethyl ethyl, because di automatically just tells you it's two of the same thing. So if you use diethyl, it implies that you have two ethyl groups. All right, so the name, the first part of the name would be diethyl, indicating that you have two of the same functional group, ethyl. The ending would be ether, because obviously you have an O in the middle. So the whole name of this would be diethyl ether. Okay? Here, um, it's very similar. We have uh, CH3 on this side and CH3 on this side. Since we have two of the same side chains, we use the prefix di. The side chains are CH3 and CH3, so we just use methyl instead of methyl methyl. The reason for this is because we have di as a prefix, so we don't have to repeat methyl twice. We know that it's two of the same thing, and that two, that same thing is called methyl. So we name it dimethyl for the first part of the name. And we name it ether for the ending because we know we have an O in the middle, so it's dimethyl ether. All right? Here, on the other hand, we don't have two of the same thing, so we don't use a prefix. We have CH3 on one side and CH3, CH2, CH2 on the other side. So you don't have two of the same thing, so you don't use any prefixes. What you do have to do, though, and then in step two, is you have to name the side chain on the left first, and then the side chain on the right next. So the side chain on the left is 
CH3 or methyl, and the side chain on the right is CH3, CH2, CH2, or propyl. So we have methyl, propyl. All right? Then the ending is um, ether because you have an O in the middle. So if you put this together, you get methyl on the left, propyl on the right, and ether because you have an O in the middle. So the whole name is methyl, propyl, ether. Okay? So there you go. Here's some sample problems which you can just try on your own, but um, please complete these homework questions for tonight's homework. All right, and now I'll be moving on to the first part of, of 11.4a, Structural Formulas of Organic Compounds. All right, for this uh, lesson, please use Table P, which gives uh, prefixes based on the number of carbons, Table Q, which gives hydrocarbons, alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, and Table R, which gives suffixes for functional groups, okay? So how to draw functional groups, you have to follow these five steps. First, you have to draw a number, the correct number of carbons based on the prefix or formula of the main functional group using table P where necessary. So whatever the main functional group is based on the prefix or formula, you have to draw and number the correct number of carbons and use table P where necessary. In step two, you have to number, use a number in the group uh, along with tables Q and R and the chemical name or formula to place functional groups in the correct carbons. And note that if you have no number, that means that the function group is at the number one position, except for ketones, because when you have no number for ketones, it's at the number two position. So that's the only exception. Okay? So uh, step three, you have to draw bonds around each C so that each has four bonds or lines maximum. And then step four, you have to use prefix number prefix and side chain group names to place side chains in the correct number C's. And then in step five, you have to place H's in the remaining empty spots. So let's try that with two example, uh, three examples rather here. All right, here we have hexane. The prefix is hex and the functional group is ane or an alkane. All right, so let's start with the prefix. The prefix of hex tells us that we have six carbons based in table P. So we draw a number, the correct number of carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six, as follows like this. All right, so I drew a number, the correct number of carbons. In step two, I have to uh, use the number and the group to, uh, to place the functional groups in the correct number of C's. All right, so we have the group is ANE or an alkane. And an alkane, as we know, has all single carbon-carbon bonds and it's a hydrocarbon based in table Q. All right, and no number and hexane just means you have a position of one for the single carbon-carbon bond because let's remember no number means the number one position for the functional group. Since you have no number, you have a position of number one for the single carbon-carbon bond. So I put a single carbon-carbon bond between one and two here, and all the rest are single as well. All right? So there you go. Um, that's true of all alkanes. All right, the first, uh, the first, uh, Carbon has a single carbon-carbon bond, and all the rest are single as well. So I drew it like this. C, single-bonded, 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 single-bonded. All right. In step three, I have to draw um, bonds around each C so that each has four lines maximum. I have one line here, so I draw three more lines to the left. I have two lines here, so I draw one on the top, one on the bottom like this. Same idea here, one left, one right, so I draw one in the top, one in the bottom. Here I have one left, one right, so I draw one in the top, one in the bottom. Here I have one left, one right, so I draw one in the top, one in the bottom to make four. Here I have one to the left, so I draw three to the right to make four. One, two, three. All right, so if you draw it that way, you'll see that each carbon has four lines or bonds maximum. In step four, you know you have no side chains whatsoever because you don't have any uh, side chain names or anything like that. So you're done. In step five, you just have to draw the H's and all the empty spots here. So that's what I did. And this is your, um, this is how you draw hexane. All right. Please watch part two of this video for more of 11.4 structural formulas of organic compounds. Thank you very much.